Alright brothers and sisters, it's finally time to represent the west side. I used to live in Los Angeles for nine years, and while I was living there, my friend actually had one of these. It's a Cadillac Fleetwood. I think that's from a Dr. Dre song. Fleetwood. Anyways, so this thing was like a boat. This thing would just sail through the roads. It was, it was fun. It was a cool car he had for, you know, driving around L Los Angeles. I'm kind of late to the game, uh, as usual. Uh, one of my subscriptions, Twice Diecast, he bought this car over a year ago, I think. The, this Diecast car, that is. And uh, I just said, you know, I'm going to hold off and try to maybe get wait for this colorway. I want one of the two tones with the sky blue or something like that. It's been over a year. It hasn't happened. So I just caved in and bought a, a black one like these photographs here. And then uh, he's far more uh, attentive than me because this is apparently is GDC. I thought it was GOC. But looking at the back of this box, it's actually Guangdong Dong Guan. I'm not pronouncing that right. I'm not Chinese, but wouldn't it be GDDG? Yeah. Anyways, doesn't seem like it's licensed. Pretty sturdy box. Really fancy packaging again. I'm a little torn on whether or not it should be there or not. This is super loose. You know, this wooden base thing. So it does need a box, I think, or something. Because it's really heavy. I don't know if a little cardboard sleeve would protect that from shipping damage. There's some extras in here. I'll leave that aside for now. So, super loose. This base here, yeah, this is that pressed sawdust wood, I think. I don't think it's a real piece of wood, although you get the, I don't know, maybe this is real. Let's find out. If you drill into a piece of wood, you'll see the green, right? So on this flat, wow, this is a real piece of wood. This is not a icky, a card, you know, you can see the green on the flat where that screw is. Alright, this is the first, I think this is the first wooden base is actually a real piece of wood and not like that, you know, sawdust stuff pressed together with glue. Is it necessary? For me, no. But is it nice? Yes, it is. Uh, kind of, sort of. See, they rip through the wood so f with a, uh, either a dull blade or the blade speed was not properly set and that's why you have all this chipping the the saw teeth rip it right this side is a lot better uh, actually this is CNC wood so yeah the bit itself wasn't sharp or it didn't go through at the proper speed and it caused chatter or something like that yeah sorry that doesn't matter to most of you guys um, let's take a look at these photos here this is a nice Cadillac uh, thing it's not a print it's actually an embo a raised Cadillac I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a, a sticker you know and it's you know stuck on there but it is three-dimensional wow this might be the best effort of me focusing on a picture and a model at the same time for some reason it works on this model all right uh, looking at this blue one here Stance looks pretty good to me. Might even be sitting a little low. Even though the tires aren't touching the wood. Hmm. Let's get the rear shot. So the Fleetwood name was used as a prefix on older Cadillacs dating back to 1935. And then uh, it became its own namesake in 1985. That would be the first generation <laughs> I love that. It's so crazy. I like it. So classy. A lot of these Fleetwoods become funeral cars, that kind of stuff. Well, if you want to live it up, you can you can go both ways with this car. All right. This is a second generation one where they went back to rear wheel drive. I guess the first generation one was front wheel drive. So this is one of those rare cars where they uh, went back to rear wheel drive. Uh, and then. 
Before its day, this was the longest production car made in the U.S. It was 5.7 meters long overall. Two 5.7 liter uh, V8 engine choices. Uh, the most powerful one, I guess, was 260 horsepower. Uh, okay. After 1996, though, I guess they retired all the rear-wheel drive sedans because everyone wanted to buy trucks instead. You know, Suburban and the Tahoe. So that was the end of it for these guys for a while. The Brome package, uh, that option would get you the full vinyl top here and the C-pillar badge, badging. So that's what this thing is representing. It's representing a 1993, I believe, uh, Brome. All right, so another interesting tidbit of information was you could get a towing package. So you could tow you know, trailers with this thing. And that was made available in 1993, which is the first year of this uh, rear-wheel drive body, I guess. All right, so that's all I learned from Wikipedia. Again, all that could be wrong. Boy, this thing's really heavy. Okay, the wheels, they're, they're not bad. Uh, you're not going to be able to mold spokes that thin. I guess if I were to criticize, maybe a black wash would be nice to have in there. Oh, what the heck? I think that's a hubcap, or no. I thought it spun independently of the tire. Or, no, never mind. I'm, I'm losing it. Anyways, look at this Cadillac badge. That's really nice. It's centered and it's nice. It's, uh, I can't really say the same about the white wall tires, though. That's not a circle. Yeah, that's kind of like a Fred Frins Flintstone uh, wheel there. This one's much better. I think. All right. And so looking at this thing, it's just floating, so you don't uh, get flat spots in the tires. I guess I can appreciate that as long as it doesn't look like it's uh, drooping the axle too much, which it isn't. So I think that's good. The door handles—they are three-dimensional. Kind of feel like. Well, there's a undercut hand grab here. The top, though, I don't think it should be that deep. So, oh well. And uh, interesting, they actually mimic the um, this door clearance. It, I think the panel itself has additional molding on the bottom half, but when you widen it and the doors, this this gap here, they have to add that extra clearance so the door doesn't collide with itself. That is on the side photograph and they actually got it in this casting so that's quite interesting. I believe there must be printing right there. Hmm. Hmm. I guess that's Fleetwood. Yeah, I guess so. Almost looks like Fleet Whoop. Like a P at the end. Yeah, that Cadillac thing on the wheel is pretty nice. This one? Yeah, pretty nice back there too. Alright. So this molding is two colors it seems. It's like a dark gray, this thin stripe, but down here it's silver. Or maybe a light gunmetal. Pretty neat. The uh, mirror is a separate piece, and there's a reflective sticker in there, so can't get more realistic than that. And then this badge on the C pillar, this optional thing. Hmm. I can't make out that text. I don't know if you guys will be able to, but on my phone screen I can't see it. But we can see the texture of this Landau top. It is grainy. I don't know what the, if this is a special paint or what, but it's definitely not smooth. It's interesting. The window here has a little black printing for that little pillar or whatnot. I'm not sure what those are called. You know, this part wind goes down, but this is static. There's a little, is this white or silver? I think it's a silver printing here for the molding. All right. All right, look at these headlights. My four times magnification, I see four light bulbs and then I think the clear plastic is going into that black hole there so it looks good 
a little orange on the back side of the clear for the turn signal area and there's a little bit of like molded you know striations or fresneling uh, on the back side this is all smooth when I'm touching so not bad I almost feel like the light bulbs might be a little too big though hmm. and what's this some sort of glue residue yeah I think they use like a soft UV glue to mount a lot of these uh, lights I gotta make sure I don't touch that Cadillac logo there on the... I'll deal with that later it looks like it can come off though right now we have a blank license plate but I think that little box might cure that sadly this bump red is just crooked it's too bad the grill has dimensionality to it black in the middle what I don't know is if there's actually air passing through it. Hold on, let me get a flashlight. No, I think it's just molded and, you know, it's black plastic perhaps, and they painted the silver on the front surfaces. Well, anyways, that Cadillac badge looks nice. It's not just the outline, but they literally printed, you know, some colors on it, so that's pretty good. Alrighty. Wiper blades look like they're separate metal pieces, and they're painted black. The window glass has some black printing on it. I guess it's on this outer surface. Yeah, this is how we saw. Here's the fuel filler. Maybe it's behind the gas tank, I can't remember. Well, we do have some defrost lines. Hmm. They're not the worst I've seen. They're not the best I've seen. I guess it's kind of middle of the road. It's hard to see the interior. But I think a large part of that is the distortion of the molded windows. This Cadillac badge is pretty nice as well. I have a suspicion it's a decal. And then the Cadillac printing. It was nice. They didn't get enough of the C in there. And then the taillights. I don't know if that's paint. I think that's just red paint. Oh. Maybe I'm wrong, because look, that's moving. Uh, I still think it's red paint, but I think it's a separate piece. That's how they get such a good break between the silver and the red. So that works. No plate is here, but what's up with this? Looks a little rough. Some casting leftovers. Little bump ruts here, cast it in. Some reflectors, paint printed on. Same with this uh, gray trim running around the back. Does that gray trim run around the front? Yes, it does. So that's nice. This little molding here on the side goes all the way around the car. Yeah, on the top, there's a little antenna stub here. It's just smooth. It's just a printing. All right. I'm not sure if this method's gonna work, but we'll give it a try. Just put the flashlight next to it. I raised this model on one of my turntables, and let's see if we can see the interior better. All right, well, the steering wheel's definitely molded. Uh, there's a bunch of molded details on the dash. What I can't tell is if there's any sort of graphics in that instrument cluster. Hmm. I don't see any. No, I think it's just a blank uh, instrument cluster. I can't remember if it's a, a digital, you know, screen or they're permanently visible gauges or not. Hmm. All right. Uh, what about this the door side? Boy, there's a lot of like this is a dirty window. trying to see what the door panels look like, but let me try the light from the front. No, I can't get through there. I can see with my own eyes is wood printing on that door. Well, I don't know if it's printing or a decal. Maybe you can see it right there on the front door. There's like red. I think that's maybe a reflector when you op or a light when you open the door. But then above it, 
I can see like a silver door handle and a wooden graphic. So maybe it's a decal or something like that. Let's try from the other side. Maybe the windows are clearer. Yeah, it's kind of a scratch or residue though on this window. Oh, but yeah, you can see that door now. I think there might even be something on the armrest, like the window switches. I think so. Rear window, not so much. Too many scratches going on. I don't know what happened to this model. Where did all this dust come from? <laughs> all right. Well, the door. The, I mean, the uh, steering column has some stalks coming off of it. The seats are just black. No additional color on the seats that I can see. Hold on, let me get a different angle. That's a little better. But it looks like there's some silver for the seat belt buckles. Yeah, I can see that. The rear as well has a little silver for the seat belt buckles. Yeah, they're sticking up there. Alright, well, it's a black leather interior. Not bad, not bad. Before I forget, what's in here? Extra 1 and 2. Dot DFF, what, what would that mean? I think I've seen photos where this thing came with the second set of wheels, but that's clearly not happening today. Two little metal, oh, those are keys. So, uh, this is like a weird fake rear spare tire. But it's so cheap looking. First of all, they cut off the sprue and it just there's a gouge missing, right? Yeah, but I I don't know if this is painted black or not, but it just doesn't look very nice. I'm gonna assume it Ew. Well, let's see. Where the heck would this go on? Oh, I see it. It hooks underneath. Let's see, hold on. Are there exhaust pipes? I don't want to take it off the base because that Cadillac emblem on the front. But yeah, I can see a little silver for exhaust pipes. And then, so this little hook here has to go under the bumper, but... Uh, Anyways, it's so cheap looking, I'm not going to use it. Alright, let's see what else is in here. License plates, cool. Liberty City. It says New York. Uh, is that a real city? I've been to New, New City, New York, but uh, I've never heard of Liberty City. Um, XLT Off-Road Bear, I believe you're from New York. Or is Liberty City from, like, Grand Theft Auto? Is this a Grand Theft Auto car? Hmm. And then you have Japanese plate options, which seems like a kind of an odd choice. Or are those Chinese? I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't recognize those characters on the upper left, the three squares. Hmm. If anyone knows that language, please leave a comment. Nice. And then, uh, oh, these are Farsi, I believe. Nope, never mind. Maybe not. They're just out of focus. I think that must be an Asian character on the left. Not sure. Well, anyways, these are all photo etch metal, and they're absolutely fantastic. I mean... Because they're photo etched, those numbers are actually raised, like a real stamped license plate. Yeah, I can feel those zeros. I haven't collected license plates in 164 scale yet, but this is the beginning of something. These are awesome. I can feel those letters. Alright, so I'm going to definitely put some on this vehicle. 
And then I'll have my two other plates for, I guess, my other favorite vehicles. I wonder if, I don't think Google Translate can read something this small on my phone. I'd be curious. I have a feeling this is Japanese. It has the same size as the US plate, the Japanese plates. But this thing, I don't know what Asian country runs plates like this. Please leave a comment again if you know. All right, let me come back. Here's a tip for you guys. If you don't want to actually glue something to your model permanently, this stuff here is made by Uhu, Potifix Pro Power. This thing is meant to hold three kilo kilos. That's over six pounds, right? So I'm pretty sure a little bit of this will hold on a little uh, license plate. What's nice about this stuff is it doesn't leave any marks. It doesn't strip paint. It, it can be reused forever. It never hardens either. So I use this to mount my Choro Q wheels, or sometimes now Hot Wheels wheels, and knowing that I can remove them in the future. So I highly recommend that, but I'm sure in your respective country you must have some sort of wall mounting putty that doesn't leave marks. So I took a tiny bit here, put it on the back of the plate. It helps to have midget hands though. Uh, I already put the one on the back, disorienting this here. Let's see if I can do this without destroying that Cadillac logo. wiggle my finger a little bit to compress that stuff. Yeah, there's no way that's falling off. I think I used a little too much actually. A little bit uh, is poking out the top. But uh, that's why I have a dental pick. Yeah, it's good enough. Alright. Yeah, I gotta figure out what other cars I'm gonna put those other plates on. Let me get this thing spinning. Wheel spinning. I like this model. It needs a better representation. It needs a little dusting. Okay. Black shows all that dust, you know? I don't have that many Cadillacs, sadly. I wish I had more. Greenlight has this uh, lowrider. You know, they have two lowriders out now. I prefer this blue one myself. What is this thing, though? I do like how Greenlight tells you what it is. It's a 1973 Sedan DeVille. Okay. And then I have this Auto World of a... something. The text is really small, I can't read it, but on the side I think it says El Dorado, so yeah, luckily they can read the text on the side of the thing. An old one is this uh, Ravel Lowrider of an Impala. I believe this is the same era actually, 96-ish. These are all so big, these vehicles. I have this Lincoln Continental from Greenlight, and I put some alloy wheels on it. Those generic metal alloy wheels. I repainted the interior. This is one of the few green lights I know of that has a screwed together base. And then I have this Hobby Japan Toyota Century from 2018. Distinguished gentleman's ride as well. And we'll end it off with a GCD Mercedes Pullman limo. I think I'll leave this one up here. Before I give it the top view. So yeah, that Fleetwood is a big car, as I mentioned, it was the longest U.S. produced car of its day. 
So, I mean, this is a modern car, and it's actually maybe shorter. I think this actually might be shorter than that old guy. This is a classic car, of course, but it's a limousine. It's obviously a little bit longer. And then the old Contis were really big land barges themselves. Hmm. So, yeah, that, I, didn't re I don't recall that Fleetwood being that big, but I guess it was. Well, I gotta say, GDC, this is a pretty cool model. Um, I don't even know if I saw any quality control problems. That glue by the headlight, I know that comes off because it's soft. I suppose there's some paint missing here. A little bit. It doesn't have that matte texture. But it being on a black car, it's, it's not as noticeable. Uh... I love the license plates. That really makes it look like a real car to me. I love that, you know, photo etched badge, how you print it on it. You have some shiny mirrors. The interior isn't that great, but for me, I don't really look at the interiors after the reviews. It's pretty rare. Uh, it's interesting that you have a real wooden base. So, this is a good model. I, I bought this off AliExpress, guys. I buy a lot, most of my new models there or at a shop. But the, the price of this on AliExpress, at least this week, or when I bought it a few weeks ago, wasn't that bad. This has a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff going on for, for the price I paid for it. So I'm very happy. Okay, so well, uh, thank you again to uh, David. I'm uh, always following your footsteps, buying these big... Uh, distinguished gentleman rides and I'm happy I got this one I kind of wish knowing knowing my luck they're gonna come out with a blue one like next month but I'm still pretty happy with this one so pretty neat good value okay guys I will you know I really wish like more premium brands would take on American vehicles it seems like the majority of US cars represented in 164 are auto world and green light which are nice, you know, for the price, but I, I kind of feel like I'd like to have a nicer option, you know. If I don't really love a car, uh, I'll buy, you know, um, I'm quite happy with green lights, actually, for what you get. They're, I have a, a few of them. But certain models, I, I am willing to pay more. Uh, do you, Would you guys please leave a comment? Would you like to have a high-end uh American car of what nature uh, even classic muscle cars why isn't there like a premium Camaro or a premium you know Corvette like a classic Corvette or any Corvette in a premium format it's really strange that these things don't exist why hmm okay well thanks for watching guys I appreciate it and uh, keep the show going see ya